Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Lee and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It's Sunday, January the 2nd, and today Pastor Rex will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, The Greatest Treasure. But first, please join us in some praise and worship music as we glorify the Lord.
When I was in grades 5 and 6, I experienced taking care of piglets to be sold later on when they grow up and become maybe about several pounds uh, for cooking. And then selling newspapers and shining shoes of other people in order to earn some money. I have to wake up early to feed the pigs, then go to the market to get the newspaper to be dropped on customers' homes and later sell whatever was left at the bus station. Then go back to the bus station in the afternoon to shine shoes. Taking care of piglets was an all-year job while the newspaper and the shining shoes were summer jobs. During those days, it was safe for elementary kids to venture out on their own in the Philippines, where I came from. Maybe you'll say, oops, pastor, what are you doing <laughs> going out <laughs> early in the morning at, uh, when you were grades five and six? <laughs> I did not get rich, but I earned enough to supplement some of my needs as a school kid. In our parable this morning, Jesus tells us the sacrifice of two men. Both of them, after finding great treasure, went and sold everything they have in order to get that treasure. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44 to 46, is our scripture passage today. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The man who found a treasure hidden in the field, we presume, was a farmer. The other man was a merchant or businessman, and both sold everything they have in order to get the treasure they had found. The word merchant in verse 45 in the original text is imporos. He is a businessman who boards a ship as a passenger for business reasons. Imporos implies a wholesaler in contrast to kapelos, a retailer. And so this guy is a businessman or a wholesaler. Remember that parables have a point or points of comparison. In these parables, the kingdom of heaven was compared to treasures. The act of selling everything these two men possessed in order to own the greatest treasure means to let go of our own selfishness in order to have the greatest treasure, the kingdom of God. In these two parables, the kingdom of heaven was portrayed as a treasure. A person needs to give up his or her own will in order to have it, and it could come at a very high price. The men in this parable sold everything they own in order to have the greatest treasure. And again, I will emphasize the treasure, the kingdom of heaven. Let us study these two parables a little closer. First is in verse 44, the parable of the hidden treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. So as the story of that parable implies, Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is extremely valuable. So whenever someone discovers the kingdom of heaven and realizes the treasure they have found, they are willing to sacrifice all that they have to obtain it. Here are other scripture passages that talks about following God, a priority. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, and Luke chapter 12, verse 34, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where is your heart this morning? Where is your heart? And again in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, 
but we have this treasure in jars of clay, this clay, this body. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. What a beautiful scripture verse, isn't it? And then again in Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. This was Jesus' answer to the young man who wanted to follow Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, okay, obey the law. And this young man said, since I was a kid, I was obeying the law. And Jesus said, okay, there's one more thing that you lack. Sell everything you have. And this man went home sad because he doesn't want to sacrifice what he has in order to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So in our parable, the man sold everything he had to buy the field. In the same way, when we seek God, we realize that there are no earthly riches that are worth to replace God's kingdom. Nothing here on earth can replace God's kingdom. When we find the kingdom treasure, we gladly sacrifice anything we have to secure our place in God's kingdom. The farmer sacrificed everything he had to purchase the field, but the treasure in the field came free. When I was studying our message this week, and I said, yeah, that's right. He just bought the field, not the treasure. It amazed me that it comes with the field. The treasures come, came with the field. When we seek God, he asked us to surrender everything to Him. When we choose God, we chose His will over our own, giving everything over to Him. He, in turn, gives His grace for free, His love for free, the forgiveness of our sins for free. Although the cost of following Him may be high, but by His grace, we are saved by our faith in Him for free. See, just like that man who bought that field. He bought the field, but the treasure came free. Okay, let's go to the parable of the pearl of great price in verses 45 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. It is very interesting to note that when the merchant found the pearl of great value, he stopped looking for other pearls. He stopped on that one pearl. He went away and sold everything he had and bought it. So when a person finds the kingdom of heaven, further searching is unnecessary. They stop with that one pearl. When you find that precious kingdom of God. Stop. Stop. Because that is the most valuable thing you can have in this life. Somewhere back in my missionary days, when Pearl, our two boys, and me live in the islands of Micronesia, maybe you will say, Pastor, where is Micronesia? Micronesia is between the Philippines and Hawaii. Those islands, those small tiny islands were called Micronesia. Micro means small islands. Nisha is islands. So micro is small. So we were there as missionaries. We certified for open ocean diving with paddy. We experienced the beauty of nature under the sea. Woo, it's so beautiful down there. It is a very different world under the sea. It seems like colors were brighter under the ocean, especially during a sunny and calm day. When I read about divers searching the ocean looking for pearls during the time of Jesus, I can picture what it was like. I can understand them going down deep. 
maybe divers in the time of Jesus looked for pearls in the Red Sea or the Persian Gulf or the Indian Ocean. Maybe they had limited modern gadgets like what we have now, but they did dive the oceans to search for pearls. So when the man in our parable finds a pearl of great value, he sells all that he had and bought it. Pearls in Jesus' day could be sold for the equivalent of, of price of several hundred thousand dollars. They are so valuable. They are so expensive. The man sold everything he owned in order to take possession of that pearl, of that precious thing. The kingdom of heaven is likened to the pearl of great value. A person is willing to sacrifice everything to have that precious pearl. To summarize our parables, the similarities of these two short parables make it clear they teach the same lesson. That's why they were put together and Jesus put them side by side. The kingdom of heaven is of great value. The treasure in the field and the pearl represents a new life God offers. God is offering everyone a new life, especially in this year 2022. The past two years were so awful. God now is offering us new life. God offers this new life through His Son, Jesus Christ. The parables do not teach us to pay the new life God offers. God does not say, okay, if you want this new life, sell everything you have and then buy it. Nope. That is not what the parables are teaching us. Jesus has already paid the price of that new life by his death on the cross. I will repeat that again. Those of you who would be listening to this video later on, that new life was already paid for. You don't have to pay that new life on your own. Jesus already paid that new life. What the parables teaches us is the willingness to give up everything in order for us to possess that new life in God. In both parables, the treasures are concealed or hidden. One has to go look for it. One has to go and look for it. Some scriptures tell us to be persistent in looking for the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 11 verses 9 to 10 says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Seek the treasure. Go and seek the treasure. And Luke chapter 12, verses 29 to 31 do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things. And your Father knows that you need them. And listen to this next verse. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Seek first His kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. God calls upon us to leave everything we have and everything that we are, but the reward is far greater than everything we give up. The forgiveness of sins is worth far more than what repentance must, might cost you or might cost me. Heaven is a permanent dwelling. A heavenly home is worth far more than temporary things in this life, in my life right now. I'm satisfied with what God gave me right now. 
the material possessions that he has given me, there are more than what I can say thank you to our Heavenly Father. Sometimes I have two of the same things, which I don't need anyway. But he has given me all of these things. But one thing he offers that is more valuable than anything this world can offer you is a place in the kingdom of heaven. That place, it's worth everything. We can sacrifice everything just to get a place into that kingdom. It is the first Sunday of the new year, 2022. This year, let us make discovering and finding the kingdom of heaven our top priority. How do we make discovering and finding the kingdom of heaven our priority? I have some suggestions for you. Find a place to do ministry in the church. We are so thankful of what you are doing right now here in our church family. So find a place to do ministry in the church. Excel in your prayer life. You cannot overpray God. <laughs> pray, pray. Whatever you're doing, pray. Make it a habit to read the Bible daily, not just once or twice a week. Make it a daily habit to read your Bibles. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness in every decision you make. Any decision you make, even the simplest things, Lord, I want to seek your will today. I'll go and buy my shoes at Skechers, or Skechers did not pay me for saying that, okay? I want your will. I want you to have priority in my life. And worship God in every opportunity you have. Either you are walking, driving, shopping, showering, eating, or any activity you do, make it as a worshipful event. Make it as a worshipful event. Worship means lifting up God's name and giving Him all the glory. We sing songs here. We worship God here. But worship God anywhere you are. It is not really about you. It is about Him. It is not your story. It is the story of God. That we are, that's why we are worshiping Him. Another suggestion is this. Bless others. Bless others with your words and with your deed. Because when you have the opportunity and you will bless others, you will be blessed in turn. Bless others. Those are my suggestions for 2022. The farmer who finds the treasure in the field was willing to lose everything he owned to take possession of the field. The merchant between the time he finds the pearl of great price and the time he puts it in his bag, cannot think of nothing else except the image of that pearl. So do we, in our search for the kingdom of God, don't lose it. Sacrifice everything you own, you have, in order to get the kingdom of God in your life. It has already been paid for. It's comes free.
Thank you, Pastor Rex, and thank you everyone for tuning in to our Sunday service. If you've been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating in our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicnaz. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.